This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Our topic for this episode is Gain a Seat at the Table, How Women Increase Their Influence and Visibility. Women professionals seeking to make a bigger impact as a leader need the strategies to get the recognition they deserve. Discover how to stand strong in who you are and inspire others to do so by creating joy and improving productivity at work and in your personal life. Learn how you can gain a seat at the table and become a true leader and influencer with our VIP guest, Lorraine H. Akiba. Lorraine H. Akiba was appointed to the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission in January 2012. Prior to this appointment, she worked in private practice as a law partner at McCorston, Miller, Mackay, McKinnon, and Cage, Shetty, Fleming, and Wright. She headed the environmental practice groups at both law firms with an emphasis in environmental and natural resources law in addition to her commercial and business litigation practice. Welcome, Lorraine, to Thank Sister Thank you, Sharon. Power. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here and honored to be part of your show. Thank you so much for including me today. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about your background. Well, as uh, you uh, indicated in the intro, um, I'm a lawyer by training, and I was a litigation partner at two uh, major law firms in Honolulu. Uh, right now, I'm at the Public Utilities Commission as a, a regulator. It's a, a, a administrative law judge, quasi-judicial position, but we also establish policy and deal with many um, uh, areas of uh, regulated utilities. And a lot of people think that's just electricity, but we regulate gas, we regulate uh, some water and wastewater companies, we regulate um, water transportation, a uh, little bit of telecom, although that's pretty much deregulated. And then we also regulate motor carriers. Um, so quite a w broad range of things that we um, have a responsibility over. Uh, and I am um, uh, right now the only female commissioner on the uh, commission. Uh, and we had a prior female chair, uh, Chair Hermina Morita, who's appeared on uh, Think Tech Hawaii before and uh, who um, preceded me at the commission. But uh, yeah, I am the only woman commissioner right now representing Hawaii, but proud to do that and proud to be at the, at the table with my fellow commissioners and with other governmental leaders. This is a very critical time, yes. as we know. Uh, for Hawaii, for the rest of the world, we're dealing with critical issues on um, the energy, the dynamic um, changing energy uh, ecosystem, climate change, sustainability, trying to uh, create the framework to facilitate the smart cities of the future and the integrated energy network of the future. So lots of heavy issues being in front of us as commissioners and uh, even just for our state uh, uh, leaders. Uh, as we deal and, and grapple with some of these um, opportunities, as I like to say, even though they might be challenges, they're opportunities as well. Oh, I like hearing that. And, you know, I'm glad you pointed that out, and our topic is gain a seat at the table, how women increase the influence and visibility. We know in today's world, influence is essential to get ahead. How do we increase our own visibility in an organization or work? Well, I think women naturally have skill sets that they could um, uh, capitalize on at, to their strengths. Uh, we, have, uh, we are good listeners. We are good communicators. We've had to be in terms of our families and in terms of um, how we interact with, uh, with uh, folks in the workplace. So I think those are some strong things that give us um, some advantages in terms of um, uh, decision making and being part of an, um, a group of influencers and Ooh. part of decision makers. I think women often have to make many decisions, multitasking. That's another strong suit that women have, and that's uh, leadership that co uh, creates an opportunity for you to increase your your um, influence by virtue of being able to uh, weigh uh, information, uh, consider all sides, be fair, and then make a decision. I think indecision and um, the failure to make decisions sometimes is what uh, is a sign of, of weak leadership in there. If I, th I think Ooh. women have that natural skill set. So I think they, they are strong leaders. And, uh, um, and really it is, um, for women, I think you have to develop a, a, a leader's mindset and you have to keep a positive attitude. Um, 
uh, it is true that I think in our community and in our society, women still tend to have to give 200% uh, in, in the workplace, but I think a lot of dedicated women leaders do. And they go above and beyond and um, distinguish themselves, not only in technical proficiency and in the substantive backgrounds of what they do, but also in terms of the people skills and communication skills, which is what makes for good leaders. I'm glad I'm a woman. Yes, I am glad I'm <laughs> I a woman. I am so too. glad I'm a woman. How do you increase visibility without self-promoting? I think increasing visibility is really letting your accomplishments speak for yourself. I, I think that that's the doing. When you do and you get things done and you include others in the doing, then you have a natural network of people that go and spread, you know, I'll go tell it on the mountain, you know, as uh, Reverend uh, Martin Luther King yeah. would say, right? Uh, you would go tell it on the mountain. You have many stakeholders, you have partners, you have collaborators that go tell it on the mountain for you. So it's um, the teamwork aspect, it's being successful in the projects that you undertake, accomplishing uh, and implementing things that you set out to do, being organized and actually achieving the actions that you have uh, targeted, and again, inclusiveness, communicating that, and teamwork, because that, again, is another attribute, I think, that uh, distinguishes uh, some of the great women leaders that I know. They're good team leaders, they're very nurturing, they are caring, and yet firm, fair, mm. and, and strong leaders. Well, you answered my next question, what is the best way to picture talents? And you did combine some of that, so let's just move forward. How do you win at the game of office politics? <laughs> <laughs> That's always a very interesting, um, uh, I guess, uh, situation when you when you deal with that. I think we, we can't be naive as women mm -hmm. leaders. There's always office politics. There's politics in, in, in society, you know, for better or for worse. So I think it is an important thing to realize that politics is really about people skills. Yeah. So if you know how to navigate your way in difficult situations, you have good people skills, you'll be able to um, deal with some of those uh, issues that come up. And again, what most people uh, need to uh, develop as leaders is a sense of fairness, mm -hmm. of being um, responsible, of being able to be trusted and credibility. Reputation um, is very important, and I believe that professional integrity is very important. So uh, as, as a leader, these are things, even though there might be office politics uh, involved, if you are able to um, have good people skills, you'll be able to assess the situation and be able to weigh in fairly if you're being asked for an opinion, or step back and say this is not a, a matter for me as a manager, or me as a boss, or, or me as a, as a a member of this work team to weigh in, in on. This is something between these other two people to, to resolve or to provide some guidance that perhaps if we look at it this way, and uh, we get above the personalities, we get above some of those mm. um, smaller issues and we look at what's the big picture, what's the common goal that we all want to achieve and how do we get there? And uh, you know, eagles notwithstanding, how can we collectively achieve what we all agree needs to be done, and that's finding, again, the commonalities. I think, you know, when I think about good leaders, whether they're women or, or men, they're able to bring consensus, they're able to bring the best out in, uh, in the people that they work with, and they're able to realize that they're not the, the smartest person in the room. So sometimes it is uh, delegating to somebody who can do it better, but realizing the potential in that person to be either a partner in the effort. Uh, you know, a teammate, or uh, you know, to maybe take the lead on that issue because they're better at doing that, and that's that's effective leadership to know the best uh, folks to bring to the table to get it done. That's great advice, and I hope people are taking notes on that because office politics, home politics, out in the workforce. It's always there. It's always the elephant in the room. And those, those are great points right. that you did bring out. And it's whether you let that become a barrier to achieving success or achieving your outcomes, or you facilitate that and you use that to, uh, to draw people to, together. Because there always is going to be disagreement. And reasonable people can uh, disagree. But it's whether we can have dialogue on that, reach consensus, and move forward. Sometimes you can't. And sometimes you might be, whether you're the boss or you're the one that makes a decision on a team, you have to make a decision, then you move forward. And yet you respect everybody's input in that process, so nobody feels that they were they were not listened to, and they don't feel that they weren't respected. Part of that is uh, part of the, the, the dynamic process of, of building a robust and, and um, productive workplace. 
I like that. I like that. And you always learn from each other. When you have this type of dialogue, I'm, I can understand where you're co where I'm coming from. Exactly. And I would, my friend told me at one time, not all adults are grown-ups. Well, we're going to be grown-ups in this room. That's right. And so I, I, can exp right. I can really admire a person that can listen and be open to mm -hmm. our dialogues and let's agree to disagree. But moving on to our next question, how do you master the art of influence? Well, I believe, again, influence is, um, is being able to lead by example. So when you, in whatever you're trying to influence people on, have either demonstrated it, lived it, or um, achieved and, and done what you're asking uh, people to, to follow or to implement, I think that's the greatest ab ability to influence people. Again, as I said, it's a personal, whether it's a, we call it a personal charisma or a personal um, credibility or respect, if, if you as an individual are able to live up to the goals and what you're trying to get other people to do, uh, then I, you'll be respected and you'll be able to convince others that yes, she lives what she says, mm. she does what she's asking us to do. We lead by, we lead by example, we lead by doing. You know, and I think the I think we also lead by giving to others. You pay it forward, and that can influence a lot of people. Your own sphere of credibility, your own ability to um, uh, uh, engender not only respect but um, but a loyalty from people that uh, you're asking to pitch in and work just as hard mm. alongside you or sacrifice alongside you. Sure, sure, absolutely. And there's a saying that, you know, every time you walk out the door, mm -hmm. you represent your brand. Yep. So we yep. have to keep that in mind. Yep. And you and I had this conversation um, yesterday. Mm -hmm. Who do you consider your greatest mentor and why? Okay. I'd say the, the greatest mentor and my hero is my mother. Mm, mine too. I, I, you know, I still, it, it touches me and I want to tear up now when I think okay. about her. Because my mom was one of the first uh, Japanese American women physicians here in Hawaii when she came back and she had a very unique uh, experience. She was a Nisei, but she was uh, a Kibe Nisei, so she was sent by her parents back to Japan to be educated for medical school when she got trapped in Japan as an American citizen and therefore an enemy alien during World War II in Japan. And so she directly experienced many of the things that none of us have any clue about. Mm -hmm. uh, war, sh food shortages, uh, again, just that, the, the, the conflict of being um, perceived by others as not uh, being one of them, even though you look like you're a, a Japanese person, but obviously you're an American. So she was very, very committed to, uh, to things such as, as peace, diplomacy. She was very patriotic, a very patriotic person, and she was committed to hard work and, and making sure that you earned your uh, position and that you, were, you demonstrated that you had the skills to be worthy of the job that you were given to do. And she was very dedicated. She was a dedicated um, physician. She sacrificed long hours to take care of her patients, and, um, and she sacrificed for me. Uh, you know, and worked and, and made personal uh, financial sacrifices so I should go, could go to a really nice school, which mm -hmm. I did, which was Punahou, and it was very expensive, and, and my, both my parents sacrificed financially. So I have to say, my mom is my hero, and she's a role model because um, she was a pioneer in her field. She experienced many things personally that many um, men and women never experienced, and it gave her an appreciation for uh, the global community that we live in. We want to talk more about that. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back to gain a seat at the table with Commissioner Lorraine Akiba. He this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. My friend, Mother, what big eyes you have. She said, all the better to see you with, my dear. That's What are you doing? Okay, pause. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Uh, uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hey, I hope you'll join me on Stan Energy Man every Friday at noon here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. 
I must be doing okay. I've done over 100 shows and they haven't fired me yet. So, hey, check us out every Friday. And if I'm not here, we got Rachel James, who's way better looking than me and a whole lot younger. So if I'm not here, you can even still watch Stan Energy Man. It's a great program. You'll learn a lot about a lot of things in energy, but especially my favorite, hydrogen. See you on Fridays. Aloha. Welcome back to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Yarbrough, and I'm here with Commissioner Lorraine Nakiba, and our title for today is Gain a Seat at the Table. My question, what advice would you give women in order to keep their seat at the table? You sit on many boards. Yes. Many, many boards. Yes. So we need to understand, we've obtained this, how do we contain it? Right. I think the most important thing is that when women are in leadership positions, whether they're on boards, commissions, or in a leadership role as a CEO of, of, a, of a company, I think it's being not shy and not uh, timid about exercising that leadership and being a leader and being confident as a leader uh, while you still are listening to others. And I, it's, uh, you know, being sustainable in that leadership is, is being able to incorporate new ideas um, being innovative in, in some of the areas, being open to new ideas is, is, I think, how you keep the seat at the table. You grow as a professional. You grow as a leader as well. And, and it's also uh, making sure that you're mentoring others because then you are truly... Uh, you're not only there for yourself, you're there to mentor whether it's other uh, women or other younger folks, uh, men and women. Uh, that, is, that is, I think, how you keep a seat at the table. You're demonstrating that you're adding value, not only to the immediate short-term work of, of what you're working on, but you're also adding value by providing um, successor, successor leadership opportunities for others that, fall, that come behind you. And that is a sign of a true leader, and that's, I think, how you keep the seat at the table as you continuing to validate your, your value, not only to the organization, to the community, but to the next generation of, of men and women leaders that will follow you. Oh, I like that. Do women need more than a seat at the table? And if so, what is it? Well, I think women need to have a, um, a balanced perspective, and I think people in, in society need to still realize that, that there is a lot put on a woman, and no matter what we say, how progressive uh, folks may be here in Hawaii, it's still a double standard. I think women still have to work harder to get mm -hmm. to the same place. They give 200%, whereas maybe, you know, other colleagues that, uh, you know, don't have the same responsibilities can, you know, it, it's, it's always exceeding the minimum and going beyond the gold standard to, you know, to, um, to, uh, to the extent some people may say that some, you know, dynamic women leaders are overachievers, but I think in order to get there, sometimes they've had to do that. So I think... We still need a supportive role, and we still need an acknowledgement that there are still a lot of old school thinkers out there. There are still a lot of people that are very um, uh, backward in their thinking. Misogyny has come up in the national uh, rhetoric, and uh, we're seeing a lot of the issues of sexual harassment and, and still lack of equality in terms of workplace, in terms of different industry sectors, and uh, women still need to uh, you know, be respected, and men need to help with that. Men are who sit alongside with women, who lead alongside with women, need to be supportive of that environment. And many of those men have daughters, um, mothers, aunts, uh, grandmothers. Yeah. So it's it's not you know it's not a male female thing. It's it's a human thing. Mm -hmm. It's a human respect and decency uh, uh, standard. And I think that still there's some work that needs to be done uh, on that to really have women um, participating equally uh, without any barriers or glass ceilings. Said it exactly the way it needed to be said. What would you like to share with the audience that we have not discussed? Okay. Okay. It's important to, to be uh, happy mm -hmm. and to be balanced as a leader. I think it's so important. And when you see a person who's not happy or who doesn't appreciate um, uh, the basic things in life, like making other people happy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's a true leader. I really don't. And so there has to be balance for a, a person to be a good leader. There has to be balance and there has to be an appreciation for um, the simple things in life. And that could just be family, you know, loved ones, um, and or just enjoying a beautiful sunset or just mm -hmm. taking time to 
for oneself um, to relax and, and having um, a good quality of life. I think that's also important as a person. If you're not happy as a person, you can't be good to other people and you definitely can't lead other people. This is true. What they say, it's if you with heart. With heart. If you don't love yourself, how can you love, love someone? Other, other people. Sure, absolutely. Um, how do you inspire women to don't waste your seat at the table? Yeah. Well, I think it's sometimes it can be very frustrating, mm -hmm. and some people can feel like, well, you know, why should I keep um, working at this? And I, I think it's important uh, because uh, you can't, um, you know, you can't give in to to a challenge. And I think most people who do get to the table, they've, they're, they've got the makeup, the personality, mm. the, the personal strength that if they got there in the first place, even if there's some bumps along the road, you keep persevering, you keep moving forward, and you keep continuously improving yourself and, 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 and the process around you. So I, I still have to say to, to folks, it's, it's perseverance, it's dedication, and it's keeping your eye on um, the goal and what's really important in, in life. Um, and, you know, despite the manini things may, that may happen on a daily basis, I think if you keep in mind what's most important to you as a person, what's most important to you to contribute and make a difference in this world, that's enough motivation to keep people at the table, mm. no matter what and no matter how tough it gets. And I think that's, that's what we're all dealing with right now. Yes, we know. are. <laughs> Very much so. And life is a challenge. And all of us have a story. And we, I think inspiring and motivating each other. We have to keep that in mind. My mother always told me there's two things I want you to remember, attitude, gratitude, well, really three, and appreciation. Yes. And we need to appreciate what each other brings to the table, yes. and that's another point. Right. Determination to improve things for the next generation, what is your advice? I think that what we, what we should remember is we are stewards of this planet. We are here only temporarily. You know, I mean, we're not here forever. So you want to always make this a better place than you got it. Mm -hmm. I feel that should be my goal. It may not always come true, but that if you, if that's the, you know, the ultimate, what your, uh, you know, the ideal utopian uh, goal you want to achieve, then you'll improve things along the way. And so I think we are, we should really make sure that we remember that we are merely stewards of the planet. And I think many, you know, Native um, and Indigenous cultures, whether it's Native Hawaiian or Native American, they have that um, value. And that's a very important value. And, and that helps um, one lead with a moral compass and a, and a, and a humility to, to remember that this is, this is not about you. It is also about the legacy you leave for those that follow behind you. And that's why so many important issues like climate change, like sustainability, like social, social justice are so important for those that follow be, behind us. And you also have to pay it forward. If, yeah. if you have great opportunities and you're fortunate, you've been blessed with many mm. things, it is so important. It's not all about me, and I know there are some leaders that, it, you know, what's in it for me, it's all about me, or very uh, narcissistic, <laughs> but that's not good leadership in my no. view. A good leader pays it forward. I think there's a, there was a, 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 a writing and there's some uh, a, a, a thought leadership on this. A good leader is, a, is the, the person who eats last, at, you know. Oh, I like that. A good that. leader is a person who eats last. Like if you're at a function, sure. you make sure your workers, your team, whether it's your soldiers, your workers, your your teammates eat first and you eat last. And I think that shows the, the servant leadership concept that that is so important and I think distinguishes many women. I think women are servant leaders. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that issue. And I, I brought that issue up. I once read, your legacy is every life you've touched Legacy you leave is built one day at a time, one person at a time, over a lifetime. What is the legacy you want to leave? I think I want to be able to say, um, or people to be able to say, that uh, Lorraine truly was a compassionate mm -hmm. and caring and giving uh, uh, leader and, and a strong leader, um, fair, um, but firm, you know, decisive, um, um, but also able to listen, and um, and I think that's important. I think that um, um, integrity to be able to to know that um, I did my best job. It may not, you know, 
have resolved everything completely, but I can know when, at the end of the day, when I look at myself in the mirror and others, you know, uh, can can uh, test or, or judge my my accomplishments, that she always tried to do the best she could and um, and treat people with decency and respect in doing that. I think that's really important. That is important. What is your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment? Hmm. I think I have to say, in uh, probably being the trying to to be the the daughter uh, that um, repays all the sacrifice that my my mother made for me, mm -hmm. and that is is still a continuing process. I don't know if I have one greatest accomplishment. I think uh, it's still a work in progress. So I continue to try to to um, live up to the. Uh, the standards and, and make sure that my mom in heaven knows that, you know, her sacrifices have been worthwhile and that I will make this world a better place when I leave it. Tell us your mom's name. Florence Iwasa. That was her name, Florence Dr. I Florence Iwasa. Wow, and she lived here. She lived here in Honolulu, lived here in Honolulu Hawaii, Honolulu. and she, she passed away a few years ago, And uh, um, but she was an incredible influence on my life, and I carry her dearly in my heart, uh, you know, every day. So yeah. she inspires me every day. And when things get tough, I still remember my mom was tough. Yeah. So when things get tough, you know, toughen up and, and, and stay focused and keep your eye on, on, on the star that you want to follow and the things that you want to accomplish. Well, what does it take to be recognized as an emerging leader? What does it take to be recognized as an emerging leader? I think part of that is, again, your accomplishments and your actions need to speak for themselves. I think you need to make sure you are uh, uh, networked in the community, and that means um, opening yourself up to, um, to work with different groups, maybe that you've never worked with before, or to learn new things. I think leadership is also about learning, and so becoming an, an effective and enabling you to be a leader and and an emerging leader is part of, uh, you know, it takes a village, right, to say, say to raise a child. I think it takes that kind of process for you to be recognized as an, as an emerging leader. You need to have a network of mm -hmm. folks that support you, that help you uh, lead, and that could be providing you technical information, that could be providing you personal support, it could just be providing you balance for those, for those days where you just need to ah, take yeah. a break and, and relax. So. That's what I think it is. It's an important network and that you need to be able to um, have that network uh, support you at, in your role as an emerging leader. Mm, excellent. What lessons has your work life taught you? What lessons? I think, if anything, that I need to do a better job of, of, of doing what I say, <laughs> which is finding balance in, in life. I think that's uh, important to find balance in life, which is... Um, uh, trying to uh, uh, make sure that I make enough time for my family, for my husband, for, for, um, uh, for my personal life as well, and, and enjoy life, because life is very short. Life is very short. Who has been the biggest influence on your life? Hmm, besides my mom, I'd probably say there's some very important female role models that I would take a look at um, throughout, um, throughout time, and some of them have been, you know, people as... Um, uh, amazing is um, you know Patsy Mink, who is a, mm. is a great leader, and uh, and also people that have um, you know toil away every day, at, you know, and come to work and and uh, balance uh, you know family and 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 home and, and the workplaces that I've worked in. So you know the everyday common um, person that I come into contact with, and and um, I think those have been the greatest influences, keeping it real, you know, to realize that. Um, it's really important what we do and how we treat each other. Yeah, absolutely. How did you decide to become an attorney? Well, I've always wanted to be an attorney. I, I don't know why as a child. I think just, you know, I gravitated toward those, um, uh, those types of, of skills. But I think it's very important. Attorneys play an important role in our society. Uh, they're there to, um, to provide representation, whether it's in the criminal justice area or social justice area. They're also there to to influence business and to be business leaders. So uh, attorneys provide skill sets that help others, and then they also have natural skill sets. And I think I, those were my personal strengths that I felt I was a good communicator, a uh, good analytical mind, and I um, am able to um, work hard. I'm not afraid of hard work, and I'm not afraid of, 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 of a stressful situation. I think um, 
uh, you know, I, I can rise to the challenge. And um, I, and maybe part of that is, again, my moral compass and, and the strength and the courage that my mom had mm -hmm. demonstrated and exemplified that I take inspiration from. And I, I draw strength from that, that uh, I can be as strong and I can do uh, do the things that, uh, that I need to do. Good. What is the bravest thing you've ever done? Bravest thing I've ever done? Yeah. Ooh. You've been all over the world. You, you <sighs> told me about so many... Yeah, I, I have to say, and I, I shared this earlier with um, with others. I think the bravest thing I've ever done, and the hardest thing I've ever done, was um, to respect my mom's wishes when she was at the you know end of her life to um, to respect her right to um, choose that she wanted to be to be able to move on to the next realm and not to be put on life support and not to mm -hmm. you know to respect her wishes and uh, and, and her her right to you know to choose. Um, her, her healthcare directives and, and what she needed to. And that was the hardest thing for me. That was the most courageous thing I did was to respect her wishes, but it was also the most difficult thing for me to do. Well, we have, our life stories are so similar <laughs> and our time is so short. We have so much more to discuss. And I want to thank you thank for you. sharing your story on thank Sister you. Paro. We really appreciate that. I want to thank you, though, for Sisters Empowering Hawaii. You are a part of that organization, and you should check out the website for Sharon, because that's how I actually got to know Sharon, and I think that's a really important organization, and, and the work that you do to honor women and to help women with scholarships, because we need to give a hand up, and we need to role, be role models for other women and give them support, and I think you do that as well, Sharon. So uh, I wanted to take that time to say thank Thank you so much for what you do. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Power, Oceans of Aloha, Peace and Love.